gotta switch planes. We are in Phoenix, Arizona right now, so we're <laughs> trying to rush to catch our flight. Yeah, we're in Inyo County, searching for uh, the infamous mining town of Cerro Gordo. <laughs> Fat Hill. Is that what it means? That's the translation. Yeah, Fat Hill. You guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how it, this whole area would be if LA did not take all the water. Yeah. Like what would that's it be? The, that's the topic of uh, many an uh, old man in a conversation <laughs> with a cup of coffee on that topic. <laughs> Cerro Gordo. All right, this is it. We found the little road. And this road is up there, it's somewhere up there. And we're in the California desert. California desert? Yeah, near, awesome. near the Sierras. Awesome, I love it. More rock here. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting more steeper. A little treacherous. <laughs> So Tom first uh, told me about Cerro Gordo because he was in the Travel Channel. That's right, right? Mr. Garcia. That's my <laughs> name. Garcia. <laughs> and he was an extra in yeah. the, this Travel Channel series. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Yeah. There he is. So they shot film in that travel channel at, at this little mining, abandoned mining town. So I thought it was pretty cool and uh, that we could uh, go check out. It's definitely not past that, that tower, but I'm hoping it's not even that high. <laughs> we're letting the car cool down for a minute. Hopefully, we're just gonna try to see, maybe we're close by that mining town. Somewhere in there, but I don't know. We're pretty high up. We can see down there. All right, we're back in the car. We're giving it another go. Is it? Is it? <laughs> So this is where you're on location. This is where I was. <laughs> That's where I had the shootout over there. <laughs> this is Robert Demeray, a former miner himself and the town's official caretaker. Well, how, how did you end up being the caretaker here? Well, I had a mine in Big Pine, California that I inherited. It had the same ore as here, but the BLM wanted to make it wilderness because it had tule elk and the bristlecone pine trees, which are the oldest trees in the world. So I mined it for a while. But anyway, I saw an article in the Fedco Reporter, and I saw this strip article about Cerro Gordo being the biggest lead silver producer, now it's a bed and breakfast. So after visiting my mine, my son and I drove up here, and I parked right in the middle of the road, the Y right there. This cowboy fellow walks out of the hotel here, and he goes, he sees the logo on my truck, J&R Mining, and he goes, is that for real? And I go, yeah, I'm looking for a new place to hang my shingle because you got the same material as I've got. We did our first test run, 500 pounds, and it was positive. And they, we worked a 50-50 mining deal. But Jody became ill in the year 99 with leukemia. And she asked me if I'd start watching the town instead of mining, and I've been doing it ever since. Wow. So this was a, like a bar? No, this was a 24-hour restaurant in the 18... 70 through uh, 1947. And this is what it looked like in 1916 when electricity came here. There's a bullet hole that goes all the way through the wall right there with the blood stain right below it. So that was Robert the caretaker. <laughs> um, so there was a group of investors that bought this place and their intention is they're trying to make it into an Airbnb. So 
So we're at elevation 8,500 feet. We didn't see any ghosts. I didn't see any. Robert said there's ghosts up here. Yeah, I didn't see any though. <laughs> I think it's just smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel to be back to, from when you were doing your first acting gig? Well, it brought back a lot of memories. I mean, <laughs> you know, being in the limelight like that. Right, right. The fame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <So> nice. <laughs> All right, today uh, we are still on the road. <laughs> uh, we're making most of our time here in California after that Baker Creek seed event. And we're just kind of going around and kind of just visiting family and uh, exploring. And today we're gonna be visiting the Bristol Cone uh, Pine Forest. So we're actually kind of on a date. <laughs> yeah, we're on a date. I'm so excited because I've, I've always wanted to see the Bristol Cone Forest. I've never, I've never been. It's always been closed. <laughs> My name is John Kelly. I work here at the Ancient Bristlecone Pine Forest. Um, we have the oldest trees in the world here. Uh, some of them date back to 4,800 years old. Take care. Uh, so, oldest trees in the world, non-clonal organisms, of course. Um, but these trees have helped rewrite history and a bunch of other cool stuff. So, to give you guys an understanding, this here is a Jeffrey Pine. Um, this is 83 years old, and this is how most typical trees like to grow. The rings start wide in the middle, and they get thinner as you go out, uh, because these trees like to grow the same amount every year. So there'll be more cells uh, to put in a thicker band in the middle, because the rings are smaller. And on the outside, you have a thinner band, because you have to spread that same amount of cells very thinly over the outside layer. The bristle cones don't grow like that. Believe it or not, there are 350 tree rings on here. So this piece of wood is 350 years old. And bristle cones do not grow like this. So as you can see, the rings start very narrow and they continue that way throughout the rest of their lifetime. And that's because bristle cones only grow when there's water available to do so. So if there's a year with an excessive amount of water, the ring will be really wide. And if there's a year that has really narrow ring, that year is going to be a year that there was a drought or something bad climactically was going to happen. Um, so we have weather records from bristlecone pine core samples, just like this one here. And these tell us tree rings, just like these do, the cross sections, except for the coring samples aren't near as um, detrimental to the tree's health. So we can take core samples and the tree will heal. When you do this to a tree, it has very negative side effects, like the tree dies. Yeah. This is 10, year, 10 years old? 10 years old. Okay. And then all the way to 200 years old? To 200, yeah. Wow. And the rate of growth on bristle cones can change quite a bit. So this one here is a tree that we have, a dead tree, I don't know if you can see it, right out the window, right across the wash. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one lived to be about 260 years old. Started growing in the year 1474 and died in the year 1734. So that tree, you know, started growing before Columbus made it to America and it died before America was a country. And then, um, the even more interesting fact, that tree has been standing in the ground dead right across that wash for like 260 years. Or, or sorry, way more than that, longer than it was alive, so. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. These trees are pretty special. It's funny, whenever we're on a date, I mean, we don't go on a date very often <laughs> at all, but whenever we do, we're like, oh, Penelope would like it here. <laughs> That's all we do is talk about. And then we talk about her and like wish she was here. We wish she was here. She would love this. Yeah. So that tree right there, that's the tree he was just talking about where they took a core sample and it died in the 1700s. So that tree's been dead just sitting there since the 1700s. That's that's a, <laughs> that's wild to think about. That's that's actually man, that's awesome. Above, right around 
10,000 feet. Windy. And we just went from about 85 degrees to about 50. <laughs> the apple I brought from North Carolina. <laughs> Is that all you gave? Are you serious? That's the last apple in the tree. The last apple in the yes. tree. Yes. Saved it for you. <laughs> since, since you helped us uh, plant the tree. <laughs> it looks all right. It might not look pretty, but it's Taste organic. It. Actually, it's good. <laughs> Is it good? Yummy. <laughs> it came from 3,000 miles away. <laughs> All right, now we're in Charlotte. We made it to North Carolina, but we still have one more layover before we hit Asheville. All right, so we're uh, looking for the Alabama Hills. We're in Inyo County, California, and those are the Sierra Mountains, Mount Whitney, the tallest peak in the lower 48 states at 14,500 feet. Visitor Center, Eastern Sierra Visitor Center, and back there is Mount Whitney. I hiked Mount Whitney, I think it was about seven years ago, 14,500 feet, uh, one of the most amazing experiences ever. <laughs> All right, so we're at Fossil Falls. There used to be a river and a waterfall that flowed over here many, 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 <laughs> many years ago. So we're gonna look at some rocks and they were sculpted uh, by the flowing water. So this is Fossil Falls. We made it to Asheville. <laughs> it was an easy flight, really. No troubles. <laughs> Perfect. It's good to be back. Bernice, we missed you Bernice. 